Well, welcome to Splatoon 2, a family friendly shooter game where you play as a squid boy or a squid girl, shooting ink at the other team until you win. I'll go more in depth on it later, but let's get on with the review. Let's start with the single player. Hey look, it's the unskippable news celebrity from the last game. Hey kid, wanna join the Octo Racist Special Ops? Uh, I actually just wanted an auto- Great! Well, have this gun and go find my other celebrity cousin. The first island section of the cluster of levels served as a tutorial of some kind. You already got one starting up the game, but it's more detailed and explained here. Story-wise, it's kind of lacking. I never played the last platoon, which- Oh, oh god, I'm gonna get flamed for this, aren't I? So maybe I was supposed to care more about this. Anyway, follow the line that the game tells you to follow, spot the octolings until they eventually actually go splat. And even though the game tries to spice things up a bit for every level by introducing a new sort of gimmicky way to spice it up, there's just not enough things to keep me interested. Yeah, sure, there's only a handful of levels that I actually found fun and interesting, and yeah, they're definitely replayable, but yeah, it's just the fact that it's not enough to keep players interested. I don't know, it may just be the fact that I'm more into competitive online games than single players, but it's just me. It isn't a single player mode without bosses, and yeah, they're just basic old bosses. They're replayable, they're fun in their own ways, but sadly that's all I have to say about them. Oh hey, are you bored of playing the single player already? Well, just leave and play the online- Oh. Anyway, let's just start off with a simple default game mode. Turf War. For the peasants. The way map selecting works is every few minutes or so, the map changes. There you go. Onto the gameplay. You see this button right here? Yeah, we'll just hold that until this pops up, and then go in the water, pop back up, and you're good. This mode lacks, and even though it's just the starting game mode, I feel like I should have had more for me having to work until level 14 to play the other modes. Shoot at the floor, occasionally the other team. This varies between every map you play, alright? And yeah, you're just good to go, you win or lose. I mostly just play this mode to level up my gear, and it may just be the fact that I'm more into more competitive games, but it still requires some skill to play. Yeah, I'm just bad at shooters, my aim isn't the best, but hey, I'm, as long as I have this overpowered weapon, I'm good. Even though it's the not the best game mode, it's super hilarious to play with friends on voice chat. But let's move on to the other superior online mode. Ranked is where the big boys go to play the other modes. Uh, anyway, let's just settle this with a nice and simple lightning round. Rainmaker, capture the heavy weapon in the center, move it to the enemy team's flag area, and if both teams fail to do so within the time limit, it just chooses whoever got closer. And if it was a tie, just hope to the RNG gods your team wins. Clam Blitz, collect clams scattered around the map, once you get 10, it turns into a football thingy. Shoot it at the enemy team's basket and have your team throw other clams at it. Repeat the process until eventually their counter reaches zero. Remember to be super aggressive and don't be afraid to go try hard in this mode. Splat Zones, take over the highlighted area with your ink for 100 seconds. Be careful, because if the other team does so too, you have to wait a certain amount of time before your counter starts counting again. If you ever get it back, wait time depends on however long you had the zone for. Tower control, stand on top of the central tower and wait until it reaches the other side of the map. Defend the tower if any teammates are standing on it, and do everything you can in your power to defend it. If any enemy teammates stand on top of it, just simply take them out and wait a few seconds to stand back on top. Remember that the amount of people on a tower doesn't matter, as long as there's just one, you're good to go. Anyway, that's ranked game rules for you. Losing a game in any one of these will affect your rank, obviously. I prefer these not because they're competitive, but just because they're more fun. Oh yeah, co-op is a thing. Yeah, it's nice and fun for a few rounds, but it just gets stale after a while. It's a nice and fun concept, but it's just not for me. It has its own ranking system, and once you go max ranked, it just... It... It gets intense, let's just leave it at that. Ah uh, yes, the plaza, the hub of the game. You can buy gear, upgrade gear, buy power-ups, you can play this rhythm game thingy. And most importantly, you can draw whatever you want and it'll most likely get featured. These pieces of art can vary between good and respectable art that can tell how to actual effort put into it, people writing whatever they just want to write about, and of course, memes. Every once in a while, there's a thing called a Splatfest. The final one might be either a few days away or probably already passed. A Splatfest is just these two news ladies arguing over something and they want to let the players decide what's right. Of course, you're supposed to pick whatever you think is right. Meanwhile, people are saying, just pick whatever your waifu says. But those people are the type that watch lolly anime and probably have one more than one anime poster in the room. Of course, this concludes our review. Overall, 2 out of 7. Need some cleanup work. Okay. There's a lot of niggas inside there. 
Sam.